All right, go ahead, Sri. Okay, um, thanks, Jason. Um, so I'm going to be presenting some of the C examples that have been added to the Helix library. Um, specifically, there are three examples that are currently in place um, uh, with Helix. Um, just wanted to also give you the location of a few um, uh, a, a few locations where you can find the Helix source code. So the Helix source code is location in the root directory directory slash source slash Helix um, slash shared API library. So this is this is the directory where you'll find the the source code and all the uh, the header files um, that have the um, C interface API. Um, if you're trying to link your own application with uh, with the Helix C interface then you need to link it with this lib helix shared lib uh, it can be found under helix install so this is the this is the directory under which you would install helix uh, slash lib um, so once you link uh, this um, this shared library with your application you might also want to um, set your ld library path um, in order for um, the uh, in, in order to find this uh, file um, all the examples, uh, the source code for the examples is located under helix source slash examples slash C interface. Uh, so this is specifically for the C interface. And um, the executables for running these examples, you'll have to go to helix source um, slash helix install. So this is your build directory uh, slash examples slash C interface. Um, so I'm going to be talking about three examples. Um, the first C example it is a very basic example. It is an example showing um, unidirectional messaging between uh, two federates. Uh, in this in this example, um, both the the federates are value federates. Uh, I'm I'm not going to go into the code, but I'll um, encourage you to look uh, at the code. So I've I've mentioned the um, the files and the location of the files for uh, for this example. So it has. Um, Two federates. Um, the first federate called as pi sender. It's in the file pi underscore sender dot c, uh, and the second federate is pi pi receiver, which is in the file pi underscore receiver dot c. Um, so the pi sender at every time step is sending a value to the pi receiver, and then the pi receiver receives that that value. So this is basically um, the whole example. Um, in in the pi sender .c file, there is code also to create the broker. Um, at at the bottom of the slide, what I've tried to show here is how the values are getting communicated and at at what what is the the timing sequence of it. Um, so at every time step, the sender is sending a value that is received by the receiver at the next time step because there is a one time step delay for the value to be sent from the sender to the receiver. So um, this is just a, a one directional messaging where sender is publishing values. Uh, the receiver has subscribed to the sender and then it receives the values at the next time step. Um, the second example is um, an example where there is a bi-directional um, message exchange between the two federates. So in this example, the receiver is also sending values to to the sender uh, but it it there is a slight um, there is a slight um, involved um, uh, logic behind it so um, the the logic is that um, once the the sender sends the value to the receiver um, the receiver only after receiving the value then only it can send the value back to the sender um, so both the sender and receiver um, are, are exchanging value. The sender uh, first sends a value to the receiver, which the receiver receives at the next time step. Once it receives the value, um, it it publishes its own value to the sender, and the sender receives it at the next time step. So the sender is publishing values um, at at every um, step, and then at its next step, um, it is it is receiving the value. So this is the um, the communication or the message interaction protocol um, that has been implemented um, in this example. Um, the third example is an example that uses um, the iterative, um, um, the the C iterative mode um, that allows that allows to send uh, messages at uh, send and receive messages at the same time step. 
Um, so the function for for this is called Helix Federate Request Time Iterative. So instead of of Helix um, Federate Request Time, you would call this function instead, and that will allow you to do functions within a time step. So in this example, um, there is a nonlinear system to be solved here. Um, there are two equations, uh, F1 and F2, which represent an ellipse and a parabola, and they intersect at two points, and depending on where you start at um, initially, you would land up with one of the solutions. Um, so in this example, um, we're using a nonlinear Gauss-Seidel method to solve, um, to, to solve this system of equations. So uh, essentially, the equations are, are split. So the first federate has just the first equation, and it solves for um, the variable x. Um, once it solves for x, it passes that x value to the second federate, uh, and the second federate is just solving the second equation, that is the federate b, um, and it, it is only solving for y values. Um, and once it solves the y value, it passes its own updated value to, to federate A. So there is a back and forth going on um, in order to, to solve this uh, system of equations. So uh, pretty much the nonlinear gauss seidel um, iterative technique. Um, so the source files are again in the example C interface folder. Um, I've, I've mentioned at, at the top what is the name of the two source files. Um, so for the federate one, um, it solves it, it, the first equation f1 of x equals zero um, using um, Newton's method. Um, and once it solves it, it sends its updated value to federate two. Uh, once, once the federate two receives its value of x, it then solves for its own value of x its own uh, variable y using Newton, um, and it's, it sends the updated y value to Federate 1. And this back and forth uh, goes on, and there's a check for convergence, uh, which is basically um, for the first, <clears throat> for, for each Federate, it checks its own um, solved variable, which is for Federate 1, it's x. So it compares the, the current iterate value with its previous value, and if it's, if the difference between the two is very small, then it, it, um, then it considers it as converged. So here the idea is that once you, you come, once you um, reach a solution, the change between the variables uh, between two iterations is very small. Um, <clears throat> so that's what the, the convergence check is for. Um, if it's not converged, then you, then you again iterate where, wherein you exchange values. Um, and along with this sort of a local convergence check, one of the things that that we found while um, while um, writing this example was you sometimes also need to check whether the other federate has converged or not, um, uh, which which I call here as the glo global convergence. So in that exam in this example, both the federates also um, publish their own convergence status, which is just a boolean um, to provide information about whether that. Um, that whether that federate has converged or not. Um, so then the global convergence for each federate is its local convergence and the information whether the other federate has converged or not. If this convergence has reached, then um, then you exit the um, the iterations and, and move on to the to the next time step. Um, so in this ex example, there is only one time step in implemented till now, uh, but I think it, it might be fairly straightforward to um, to add other time steps as well, um, but uh, this this example gives you um, um, kind of the basis of of how the the helix C iterative uh, mode works, and uh, it's it's an example that solves two nonlinear systems and exchanges values, tries to check for convergence, um, and uh, that's I think pretty much similar to how the different simulators and and federates are are also going to be. Um, so I think that's my last slide, Jason, and I can take any questions. Um, Shri, just a question on the last slide. Did you did you check like if if you had solved these two equations on the same federate, it took the same iterations, or the number of iterations changed, uh, solving them and on two different federates? 
Yeah, so each each federate is solving its own nonlinear system. Mm -hmm. So it can take um, so the 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 first federate is solving the first equation, which is this f one x of y, x comma y, sorry, and the second federate is solving f two uh, um, x comma y. So these are solving two different equations. So it can they can take different number of iterations. Well, well, what I mean by iterations is the iterations to just solve these nonlinear um, equations, not the iterations for the cost cycle. Right. I, I mean, what I just wanted to check was that if you had solved all of both these equations in the same federate, how much time it took to solve them versus doing it, like how many iterations it took to solve them versus doing them, uh, solving each equation separately on, on the two federates. Like, yeah, so so yeah. this this being a very simple example, I think solving them together uh, mm -hmm. would be much fa faster than uh, than doing a gauss idle because gauss idle inherently is slower than just doing a full Newton on the mm -hmm. entire set of equations. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. you know, uh, there are there are like if you if there are cases where um, it's very difficult to write the Jacobian for the full system of equations, and in, in those cases, you would want to split them and and solve them separately. In in that case, maybe the Gauss cycle might be faster. Sri, sure, this is Trevor Hardy at PNNL. Uh, the yeah. the uh, procedure or protocol that you established to determine whether this federation had uh, converged. As a whole, is that something that you established yourself, or is that supported directly in Helix? Uh, no, that's something that I had to include in the um, in in the example, and um, I've had some conversations with with Phil about this, and I'm I'm still not clear about you know what are the different ways, because um, I I know um, there are there are three modes with the Helix um, iterative API. One is you can um, set it to not do any iterations. The second is you you would force iterations, and the third is um, allow it to decide whether it wants to do um, some some iterations or not. Um, so I think I I'd like to check with Phil if um, if we can check we can add the global convergence. I believe the last um, discussion that we had, my impression was the global convergence is is not included in Helix. Yeah, I would still argue that that shouldn't necessarily be required, but we can discuss it more. Excellent. Any other questions for Sri? All right. Thank you, Sri.